Riley here from becomingelectrician.com. Welcome back to the Roughing In series. Again, you guys can check out the playlist if you don't know about it already. There's tons of videos about you know roughing in as an electrician. This video is gonna be about pulling wire and stapling. Now, we are done boxing, so which means that you would go, all the screws that are in your pocket, you would throw them back into the box. Typically, your company buys a nice big box of screws, eight by ones, and now you'd be loading up on staples. I like to have side cutters. These side cutters, highly, highly recommended that you get the angled ones, okay? What this is gonna allow you to do is when you screw up stapling, such as maybe you ran a wire the wrong way, it allows you to leverage, okay? Because of the angle, you get the nice leverage. It's such, it's, this is all the difference, okay? So when I would wear my coveralls, again, you guys can check out the other video I did about should you wear pants or coveralls. I always wear coveralls as an electrician. I should probably be wearing them right now just to make life easier, but they always went in the back pocket. And because they were angled, they kind of, they kind of fit really, really good. And you didn't even really notice they were there. And again, when you screw up, you just be like, pop, okay? Then on the coveralls, they also have a little slot on the left and you would just drop your hammer in, okay? We are now moving into pulling wire, hammer, side cutters with the angle and staples. Now for me personally, I always liked these metal ones. The plastic ones are good too. I think the plastic ones are a little bit more expensive, but these are like my favorite ones and code rules are kind of changing um, now. You can't put like two wires underneath like the same staple and stuff like that, which is, you know, personally, I think I used to like to put two wires underneath one staple, but what was happening was people were hitting the staple too hard. And I guess it would cause house fires over time. There are new staples out nowadays and they're like stackable staples. So like you staple them in and then they, the, the wires can kind of clip in. They're kind of weird. I went to Home Depot here in Canada and I asked, I said, do you guys carry those? And they're like, no, we don't. And it was just kind of weird because it's like it's a new code, but they don't even carry it. But anyway, so these were for 14.2, 12.2, and uh, I believe uh, number 10 as well, 10.2. Uh, but once you start getting into bigger wire, such as for your range, they also have bigger staples as well. Look at the last page in your electrical prints because sometimes they spec out specifically saying that you cannot use these certain staples even though that, you know, like maybe the company says you can use them, but your prints say otherwise by the engineer, okay? So it's all about listening to the engineer and reading the back job site specs, okay? So, um, and then when it comes to the actual wire, typically when you work for a good company, they buy them on the spools, okay? And then you put them on your, on your rack and then you run a piece of pipe through the spools and then, you know, then your wire is really, really good. Having your wire like this is horrible, okay? If you ever watch uh, tutorials where they have it like this and they're showing you how to uh, uncoil it properly and stuff like this, the only time that you should have wire like this is when the wire on the spool was at the very, very end and you just pulled it off and then, you know, you're just cleaning up or something. Having your wire like this is horrible for pulling. It's so annoying, okay? Your wire is always gonna be twisted and, and you're always just fighting. Because when we are electricians, when we're pulling lots of wires, okay? So for example, we have, let's say, a switch here. Let's say you had a thermostat here. Let's say you had another home run here or something. So you have like three different wires. We as electricians do not pull one wire at a time. We are typically pulling three or four wires at a time, depending on how much we got going on, deadlines, all that kind of stuff. And we are making sure to label both ends of the wire. So if we are gonna pull this wire, um, you're gonna label it, pro tip, do not label right here. Okay, a lot of people, I'll show you that quickly. For example, they'll say like a plug. So I'll, I'll write plug. And typically this is how I've always uh, seen it done. So I'd be like, plug, okay? So I'd be like, plug. But what happens now is when this has to go into the box, like you're gonna, sh you're gonna strip this off from right here and you're gonna lose your marking, okay? So this right here is silly. And I'm telling you that instead of labeling right here, you just label up a little bit more. So don't label twice. This one is, is a no, okay, don't do that. And then, so this is a plug. So which means that if we're gonna staple, okay, so we stapled our wire and you can see that our plug, we would leave it and we would still have enough wire. So even in this case, I'd still say that's not enough. You'd wanna go more because what a lot of tutorials don't tell you, and this is what you, real electricians do, 
they make sure to have a service loop because if anything happens, you have wire. So what a service loop is, is if our wire is like this and we've stapled it, okay? So we have, we have wire at our box, but like this long. What happens is we wanna have a little bit of a service loop. So it looks just like this. And then you put your wire in, okay? And you can see that I have the plug. So I, actually that is not bad, the, what I did right there. So that's about a good, a good length. So about a foot, maybe 18 inches up, and you get your service loop. That way, if anything ever happens to the wire in the box, look what you can do. Boom, okay? So you have your staple about here. You have your service loop, and then you're good to go. So a lot of people don't think this way, and most tutorials on YouTube, I saw them just go direct into the box. You never want to do that, okay? You always want to have what's called a service loop, okay? You don't want to pinch the wire. You just want it to have a nice kind of gentle loop. So that's really important to know when it comes to pulling wire. And um, typically when it comes to power, most people would just draw a line, okay, just like this. This wire is actually really weird. I bought it in the package and it's really sticky, really gross, but a lot of people will do this for power. It's a, it's a kind of a, they just do a line, okay? It's not really sticking too well, but yeah, let us do like this. And that'll show for power, okay? So typically if it is a plug, you just go plug, or if it's like baseboard heater, that would be BBH. Okay, so again, typically when it comes to pulling your wire, what happens is you're gonna label the one side of your wire for plug, okay? And then on the actual spool, it's like a, you know, a metal spool, it's round. On the outside of it, you would also label plug, okay? That way you know that when you go to cut the wire, that you can label the other end of the wire right away. All right, so again, when the wire is on a spool, you're able to pull it off and you're just able to pull the wire through and you can see what I'm doing right here. So you just kind of pull it through, you continue with the left hand, you grab it with the left hand and you grab it. And that's how fast it is, okay? When you have two wires, sometimes you could even tape the ends. And so for example, like let's say you had your two wires, like I would not suggest taping them together like this. Usually it's wisest just to pull one back just a little bit and what you're gonna do is then you would tape like this, okay? You just kind of tape it back just a little bit. And then what you can do is you just leave like a little nubby like this, and then it just makes it really easy to pull off after as well. Especially in this case, like we're not lubing wires, but when you get in the commercial scene, you start lubing a lot of wires before they go into the pipes. You always leave a, a little handle, okay? And then you can just pull it off easy. But by doing it like this, if you are gonna stick it through the hole, the one wire goes in nice and easy, and then it can kind of go through. And you probably want to tape it back just a little bit further. That way, um, when you are pulling or whatever, it doesn't pull out on you. You have a little bit more grip there. But that's a little pro tip, okay? So let's pull this out. And again, I can pull that off nice and easy as well. And so what we're gonna do is we are gonna just staple it up, and that's gonna be the power that goes to the plug. So like I said, you know, what I would do is you just take a couple of staples, like usually your company has a bucket of staples, and when you're wearing Carhartt pants, the pockets are pretty heavy duty. You just take a, a nice handful, and you gotta be careful for a handful, because a lot of times you can get uh, the nail, like these nails, you can get the nail that goes into your fingernail, and it's horrible because Essentially, you're putting a, your hand in a nail, a bucket of nails, staples, but really each, there's like two, two little nails on each staple, right? And so anyways, put them in your pocket. I'm right-handed, so I put them in my left pocket. If you are left-handed, put them in your right pocket because you're gonna see what's gonna happen here. I'm just going to staple it. And you don't need to have tons of wire. And again, if I had my coveralls on and stuff, I'd put them in. I should probably just wear them for like the next videos, but that's okay, I'm being lazy. So this is the plug, okay? You can kind of just, you know, like that. And then you come here and you would kind of want to mold it, right? Want to look half decent. In this case, you could get away with one staple. Right, you can do one staple. If you want it to look nice, you could do two staples. And when it comes to staple, like you wanna hit it pretty hard, but not so hard that you're hurting the wire. And then a lot of times people, they'll just kind of fold it in gently and it'll stay better, okay? And so in this case, I will probably just put two staples. It'll look nicer. Okay, so get your first nail started. That way you can kind of get your hand out of there. But I usually try to keep the wire secure because um, you can easily 
the nail can easily go in the wire. Okay, so now this is a really, really important part. This is like the finishing touches that makes an electrician versus a homeowner, okay? So if you're just a homeowner watching this, it's a pro tip for you. So I believe your staple has to be within a foot of the box. I always say I believe because code rules always change for electrical, okay? So typically it's about within a foot of the box. You don't want it to be super close to the box because then it's gonna be really close to all your different uh, connectors. We'll just staple that. Okay, but the finishing touch here is the service loop, okay? You wanna have your wire like this. Now, if you have two wires in here, you want one wire to be long, you can cut it, and it could be what's called your pigtail. That will be in upcoming videos. But you want to have your service loop just like this, okay? It looks just like that. That's called a service loop. And so what happens is sometimes if you don't push your wires in the back of the box very good, which I will show you, I'll show you how to push the wires in, I'll show you how to splice properly, um, what will happen is the drywaller will nick your wire. So what you'll do is you put it up like that and you say, okay, that's my length. That's where you strip your wire from, okay? You'll strip it, pull off the jacket, you'll enter in the wire and you'll be left with a nice service loop. And it looks pretty good, especially when you have two of them. When we get into the uh, two gangs and three gangs, you will see that you can have lots of wires and you just have your little service loop. If it gets hit, pull it in, no problem. Now I've also seen people do it like this but this can also like, you know, like that can get stuck. You're not gonna get your wire. So typically the best that I've seen over the years is a service loop like this. It'll allow you to pull in your wire, okay? And uh, we'll just leave it like that for now because we have stapled. We're not cutting in right now. Remember when I told you with electrical, it's all about doing one task over and over with the minimum amount of tools. So in Right at this moment, we're doing what's called wire pulling, okay? So we're drilling holes, we're pulling wire, and we're stapling. And we wanna make sure that we are stapling and everything is done so that when it comes to the cutting in, which what I'm sharing right, right here with you, when it comes to stripping the wire and putting it in the box, that's called cutting in. We're putting the wire in, we would be splicing, we're putting the marette on, we're bonding, all that stuff. That's called the cutting in process. That comes next. Right now, we're just in the um, pulling wire stage. Okay, so when it comes to drilling your holes, you wanna make them fairly level. It makes pulling wire way easier. When it comes to labeling, you wanna label up a little bit higher on the wire because um, then you don't have to cut it off because I, again, just like I just said, um, when it comes to something down here, you want a bit of that service loop. So you can see that we have a service loop right down there. We strip off right there. So everything from here gets stripped off. And we wanna make sure that we keep our label, okay? You're not able to see the label very good, but we wanna make sure we keep the label. We don't wanna do it twice. In the case of just a single switch, it's not too big of a deal. Once you go to a two gang, it gets more involved, especially a three gang, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. There's 12 slots, but it doesn't mean you're allowed to put 12 wires in there. You guys gotta look at your box fill, okay? All right, so again, my own personal choice of tools when I am pulling wire is side cutters. Make sure that they are the angled ones. I'm telling you, it's gonna make your life way nicer. These ones are the uh, Journeyman series. Uh, they do have the nicer grips. You guys can check out my video on how to buy Klein Tools pliers. It'll teach you about the different grips and the different metal types. Um, you want a hammer when you're pulling wire, and then you also want to have your staples. For example, you can see I could put my side cutters in right here, right? And we, we can pull that off. Look how easy that comes out, and then you just keep going. And then if you wanted to take the staple out, there, that's how easy it is. And you can, you, you can even use your side cutters to hit it back in sometimes. Sometimes, um, sometimes if you're in a really, really tight area like this, you know, you can use your side cutters. Sometimes you wanna use your clines. All right, so again, that's this video on how to pull wire as an electrician. We will do one other video about how to pull wires. And then uh, we'll get into the cutting in, which is actually putting the wires in the boxes, splicing, how to make it look nice, okay? We're not gonna be crossing wires. It's not gonna look like spaghetti. It's gonna look nice and clean. And then you can know how to actually do it because sometimes people don't show you. They just say, oh, go do it. Sometimes they don't check your work. I used to always at least check my apprentice's work at least once or twice, you know, just kind of go up and be like, hey, show me your splice. You know, just to kind of make sure that 
they know what they're doing and it just really uh, had a really good relationship with the apprentices that way, right? Okay, I'll talk to you guys in the next video. If you wanna stay updated, check out my free book for apprentice electricians by going to becomingelectrician.com forward slash subscribe. Check out this playlist for more roughing in videos for electricians. And you can also subscribe here on YouTube so that you don't miss a video. I'll talk to you in the next one.